Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. I am your host, Matorius. This is part one of the 1744 uh, breakdown of Owen Benjamin's live stream. If you would, go ahead and hit that like button. I have to be reminded whenever I'm watching somebody that I enjoy watching. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whenever you're watching this on this beautiful day, on this beautiful realm, in this beautiful world. Hey, God's worth. It's a red flag for me. I've seen enough of his live streams to where if he starts off on the sweeter side, then it's probably going to end up in the next 15 minutes being some form of a spiral. Because it's a mask that he tries to put on, wolf in sheep's clothing scenario, situation. Today we're going to talk about the pendulum swing and navigating the idols and puppets that are being presented to us. I had a pretty fun Twitter battle with this uh, coked out Christ bro who's been trolling me for a couple months. He, he used to be my biggest fan, apparently. Uh, just like um, that, that dude from uh, every gamma male is just like that guy from uh, uh, The Incredibles. It's called, what's his name? Uh, Sam- there he goes slandering somebody saying that he's a coked out ortho bro or whatever he just said. There's probably no, I mean, I, I have no idea who he's talking about, but it's just, that's a red flag. If you're listening to somebody and everybody that they talk about, they throw some kind of slander in there, whether it's true or not, it's, it's, it's a, it's a red flag as, as far as my opinion is concerned. I'm your biggest fan. And then they go, oh, are you sure? You've never been funny. You failed. So this episode, 1744 Codsworth already made a meme. It's called Culture Swing and the New Puppets and Revi- Revisiting when Kate, when Andrew Tate censored me. Because right now, you know, they, they got the two pillars of the Muslim fuckboy, Andrew Tate, and the Christian fuckboy. Is try- the Christian fuckboys are trying to uh, compete over who's going to be the fuckboy. And uh, this dude, John Zerka, who... <laughs> He's called... Oh, my, dude. But why? Uh, Vox alerted me to a couple days ago that they're uh, front running him and promoting him and authorizing him and uh, putting him out there in the mainstream as this Christian fuckboy puppet that uh, being um, a Christ guy is all about calling women whores. And if you go to his website, it's just a bunch of dirty whores and bikini models. It seems what he is describing reminds me of the whole Manosphere thing. I did a video. I don't remember the guy's name, but I did a video on it. Um, I think it was on my old channel. I might upload it, but it immediately got the dude's attention. He started commenting on that video and it (laughs) shortly thereafter. uh, Yeah, it's just not a a healthy atmosphere. The whole manosphere thing is very uh, toxic. I'm not even going to call it toxic masculinity. It's just toxic. And, um, you know, he's bragging about getting blowjobs from drunk girls and he's on Adderall and steroids and he has lip injections and he's, he's all about Christ. And, uh, you know, no kids, no solutions, all that stuff, because the pendulum is absolutely swinging. So we're going to get to that. We're going to revisit when Ye was on Alex Jones talking about me. We'll do that after we're off Twitter. Another side note, just because somebody says that they are a Christian or whatever, <clears throat> doesn't mean that they are. And it's, you can see it in politics as well, not just religion. The enemy creeps around seeking who he can destroy. And so it's it's nothing for them to pretend to be something, pretend to be the person, that, the, the thing that they don't like in order to tarnish what that is. And I think that's one of the reasons the motivations for Owen, whether or not he knows it or not, because he does muddle the water a lot on a whole lot of different topics because I know uh, that that violates their terms and a uh, little man with a mustache and the boot boys can't make babies from a guy's ass or a woman's mouth. That's a very good point. God's worth and what it means to actually win, you know, what it means to actually provide solutions, how the false binary. And I'm not like, I don't view Masons as my enemy at all. I actually know a lot of Masons that are cool dudes and they're holding it down and they have uh, they support each other and they're all about, you know, being a better man and all that. Uh, but if you're going to try and include me in your gay little scripts and plots and uh, puppets, I'm going to mock it. And the funniest part is I called out Zerka for, and, and Tate for their gay little Mason tricks that they're trying to include me in. And um, How are they trying to – what's the evidence that they're trying to include him in? 
I don't, I honestly have no idea what he's talking about. Are they, is he trying to imply that they're trying to use him? Trying to say that they are friends with him or <clears throat> I don't understand what he's, what he's alluding to. And I know more about masonry than, than some of these masons. Like that's the funniest part is, uh, Hey, Trout or Jew bear. We all know a woman's mouth is for bitching and moaning. That's a good point, Bull Rush Bear. Speaking of steroids in Boston, Godsworth. Oh, first off, we have um, a copy of the fifth magazine, and we still have a few more for sale. Oh, and I also want to talk about how much I like yes men. I don't like no men. We'll talk about that. And that doesn't mean I want people to uh, indulge my delusions, but in a hierarchy, you want yes men. You don't want no men. You want men that say yes. We'll make it happen. And then the deltas are the no men. You want your bravos to be yes men. The vision, the bravos say, yes, we can definitely do it. The dream is the value, you know, and if we want castles and airships, yes, I'm surrounded by yes men. Yes. The deltas can push back and say, you know, we, I, I, we, I've run the logistics. I can't exactly make a blimp right now. That, and then the bravo and the delta deal with that. But no men are not valuable at all. I really like yes men. And no. <laughs> I mean, he, he wants his, uh, <clears throat> he wants his echo chamber. He values his echo. Ch he has to have an echo chamber. It's his eco chamber. It's the only way that he can survive with his echo chamber. I'm going to get into that because the concept that a, ye that a yes man is bad, I think is ridiculous. The slogan of a Bravo is consider it done or just done. Yeah. And if you fail, at least you fail trying. You know, the Bravo doesn't have to make every dream. That's a whole lot uh, that I mean, that that brought back some memories of his the original Bertaria scam, the beginning of it. Even if we fell, at least we tried whenever he was being uh, accused by a whole lot of people, way more people than he would care to admit that he was stealing from people. At least I tried. You could give me all this hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and at least I tried. Well, that just means that you're stupid because you had the resources to do something beautiful and you didn't because you, no, I wouldn't say stupid, greedy, greedy. Of the alpha come into fruition, but you have to try because the thing that makes the alpha so valuable or the visionary or the genius or the artist or whatever is that they'll come up with something that's awesome. And most people immediately think it's impossible because whatever you come up. You it's very important to realize that he is referring to himself. There's no other person that he's referring to besides himself. The genius, the artist, the the leader, the alpha. He's referring to himself. How many people told me not to make a magazine because no one reads magazines and no one will buy a magazine? No men. Oh, you're going to embarrass yourself. You're going to humiliate. No, we're fucking doing it. Yes, men. And it's great. Our magazine is now selling better than it's ever sold. This magazine was our highest selling magazine. And we still have some available, and this is half the price of our last one because we figured out half the size with half the price is the move because we'd rather have you have it than not have it. And so um, magazine.baritariatimes.com. Do you know how many people told me to never try stand-up that I was going to embarrass myself or like uh, don't get married because you'll just end up divorced and they'll take half and uh, you can't start your own platform. Oh, everybody's mocking Bertaria. You should just quit. No men have no value. Now you can fail. I understand. I'm not... Uh, I'm not delusional. Like, I understand that I'll come up with a, a dream. And, like, for example, um, our first crowdfund. I thought we could raise $2 million in, like, a month. Whatever that is up on the left, this is totally <clears> – <throat> this is not um, relevant to the conversation. But the thing that fell in one of the previous live streams is still dangling there. Is there anybody that knows what that is? <laughs> and it's not fixed yet buy this epic 350 acre property if more people chipped in that would have been fucking epic by the way i just want you 350 acre property it was just over 200 so even him retelling the story is stupid and lies i don't want to say it's stupid but it's definitely uh lies you guys to know that we raised 400 grand and made the best out of it and it's awesome i shot for the moon hit the back fence everyone had a blast we we did something that no one else had ever done on the internet you know, an internet personality comedian crowdfunding for debt-free land where we could have events and not be canceled. It was fucking epic, right? It was an investment fraud, as far as I'm concerned.
He is he is talking about an investment fraud during a worldwide crisis. He said, hey, guys, give me your money. We'll buy this 200 plus acre land. It's a compound. You'll have a place to go if society collapses. Three years later, it's t- it turned into 10 acres, four hundred thousand dollars, according to him. And I, I believe that it's far greater than that because it was days afterwards, at least the next day possibly a couple of days a week, whatever. He said, if you want this money to go to Bertaria, write Bertaria on it. That's one of the most disingenuous things I've ever heard anybody say while he's accepting money for an investment opportunity. And then he turns around, builds his $500,000 land home, and then three years later, it's 10 acres. So according to him, it took $400,000 and three years for there to be something to show for it. The no men don't do anything. Like, oh, that'll never work. Okay, then get the fuck out of here. Oh, you just want to be surrounded by yes men. Yes. And then they're like, oh, I'm dead. I know what, the, okay, so you have the vision and then you have your generals and lieutenants like the Codsworths and then you have the deltas that, you know, the fabrication or like the, the guys working at, um, at, uh, you know, on the logistic aspect, and they'll say what is possible and what is not possible based on your, um, you know, based on your budget and time frame and all that. But it's all about yes men. God- it's not all about yes men. <clears throat> you ever seen the movie, uh, what was it? World War Z? I think it was Israel. They had an 11th man or 12th man or 10th man or whatever. And the role of that person was if the rest of the if, – if the other men all agreed on something, it was your job to say why it's a bad idea, to tear it down. And no men are, are important. He's, there is some truth to what he's saying. You want people around you that – go-getters, you know. But to say yes men, that they say yes no matter what, no. That's cult behavior. Said people who say no or doubt right away have never been part of the creative process. Yeah, in a writer's room, it's called or employees, right? If you're the boss, if you're if you are in charge of employees and you tell your employee to do something, yeah, everybody should be a yes man in that scenario. As long as policy procedures being followed, you're it it is your job. You're literally being paid to to be a yes man. Yes, do this. Now, I've been in situations to where it wasn't fo- they weren't following policy and procedure, and so therefore I had to say no, or I had to stand up uh, for a, a fellow employee who was being told to do something that went against policy and procedure, possibly even dangerous. Yeah, no, that's not, that's not, no, you're not doing that, and this is the reason why. Thorn, you're not allowed to say no. In improv, it's called yes and and in time frame and all that, but it's all about yes men. Godsworth said, people who say no or doubt right away have never been part of the creative process. Yeah, in a writer's room, it's called a thorn. You're not allowed to say no. In, in improv, it's called yes and. Okay? So when you're doing improv comedy, and Coffee Grounds Bear claims to be a comedian, and you are very funny sometimes. I hope you know that what I'm saying is true, and if you've done your research, you'll validate it in the freaking um, chat. All improv comedy is based on being a yes man. You say yes and. So if somebody's like. Okay, so to compare real world scenarios with real world outcomes with improv is convoluted and dangerous. You're, you're taking the land of make believe and trying to implement it in the real world. Now, are there certain aspects? Yeah, man, the creative process, that's how innovation happens. But I, I think with the context of this being. <clears throat> spoken by a dangerous cult leader <clears throat> who has predatorial tendencies is in itself dangerous. Hello, Codsworth, my butler. So now that's real. So now you agree that that's real and you add to it. That's how all... Okay, so this is his wizardry. He just took he just took an aspect of what he said. He's laying out the groundwork for manipulation. <clears throat> Let's listen to that one more time. All improv comedy is based on being a yes man. You say yes and. So if somebody's like, hello, Codsworth, my butler. So now that's real. So now you agree that that's real and you add to it. That's how all comedy works. That's how creation works. So a no man, you say yes and. So if somebody's like, hello, Codsworth, my butler. So now that's real. So now you agree that that's real and you add to it. 
All right. So I know that I could be reaching on this <clears throat> because he has talked. I don't know what that was. Excuse me. <clears throat> I know that I, this could be considered reaching a little bit, <clears throat> but taking into consideration who's saying this, what their history is with wizardry, spellcraft rhetoric, him saying, okay, somebody says, hello, my, uh, whatever Coddington. And then you agree with it. That makes it real. Now, just remember his saying or his whatever you want to call it, pay the gay away. So for you to pay the gay away, you're acknowledging that it's real. Is that the situation that we've got right now? Him actually explaining his his spellcraft, his wizardry. <clears throat> That's how all comedy works. That's how creation works. So a no man is. That's how creation works. That's one of the reasons why I've been saying no, because you don't accept the creation that Owen Benjamin wants to uh, be a part of. The answer is no. This is the Texas Goat Radio Show, and I'm your host, Matorius. As always, till next time. <laughs>